Okay, now you're at your set and you're ready to start calling. You turn on your electronic caller, you start blowing your hand calls, and this is what is really important at this point, how to use this light. You want to open the light and have it on its widest setting, and as you're calling, in fact, the whole time you're at that stand, even when you're not calling, after you've begun calling, you want to continually move the light in a steady motion. You can see I'm not demonstrating moving the light really slow, looking around, and I'm not going really fast. There's a reason that I'm kind of showing you this speed. Okay, let's give you an example. Let's say if I were to shine this light really slow when I was scanning. I'm shining over here and I'm just kind of looking around taking my time. Coyote pops up down here on my other side. This light is not shining on the coyote. Again, if this light is not in the coyote's eyes, it can see you. So you've got a problem. He's probably gone now. But if you continually move the light, so you can try to pick up that coyote or that fox or that bobcat before it can see you, that's what you're trying to do when you're scanning. So you want to scan continuously back and forth. Not real slow, of course not super fast. The entire key is once you see an animal's eyes reflecting back at you in your light, until that shot is taken, do not let that animal get out of your light. You have to see the reflection the entire time. You don't have to hit it with the middle of the beam. You can hit it with the sides of the beam. It doesn't have to be on its brightest setting. But what you need to do is to make sure that those eyes are illuminated the whole time. Because what that really means is it cannot see you. It's seeing the light. If your red light is reflecting off that animal's eyes, it's not seeing you. Very important. A lot of times I'll be at a show or I'll be given a talk and I'll get the question, you know, predator spooked because my light was too bright. Well, it's a possibility. Pretty rare with Fox, but I guess it's a possibility it could happen. I haven't seen it happen too much. But often, here's what happens, okay? Somebody is scanning, and they see a coyote. So they do a really good job of making sure that the coyote's eyes are illuminated the entire time. But what's the next step in the process? Well, the next step is to get on the scope of the gun and make sure 100% certainty it's a coyote or a fox or a bobcat and to take the shot. Well, you need a gun light and a scanning light. So transitioning between the two of them, you have to be very careful that you do the following. You have the eyes lit up. Make sure this light is not turned off. It's not taken off the eyes of that predator until you have your gun light turned on and on the predator. Once you do that, now this light is keeping you camouflaged from the predator, and you can turn this light off, you can put the light away, and you can go and you can get behind the scope, and you can dial in your light, turn it down, make a positive identification, and take your shot. Here's the problem. And I'm sure when I started, I did this too. There's lots of different things that probably happen and we learn from. Here's one I learned from, okay? A lot of times you're scanning and you're really excited. So what you're doing is you turn off this light and you turn this one on. And that might only be a second or two. But in that second or two, you're totally exposed. You have no camouflage. So if that coyote is looking in your direction, he sees you and then you get over to this gun and the, and the coyote's gone. And you are right when you turn this on and you think, wow, that was too much light or or I made sound, may not be the reason. The reason may be because you let the coyote see you because you didn't keep that red light in the eyes of that animal the entire time. You let that animal see you when you transition from your scanning light to turning on your gun light. Even if you have them both on, if you watch my hand, I can't go down like this. I have to be conscious the entire time that I never take this off the coyote's eyes until this light covers me and lights up the coyote. 
then I can get behind the gun or my client can get behind the gun and if I identify it, they can take their shot. 